fun. Nice. There we are. <laughs> Hi everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is June twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, and we're doing a comic book reading or multiple comic book readings. Plutonic pluralist first. <laughs> Over here first, <laughs> first. That's where our chat is right now. Uh, fantastic. Nice to have you here, Plutonic Polaris. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. Nice, nice Sunday comic book reading. Season is back, I guess. Uh, probably doing this in season format. And now, Uncharted Days. How are you doing, Hey Chicho and Chad? Hope you're having a great Sunday. Indeed, indeed. I've just been in chill mode, going through. Uh, the comics uh, that I highlighted, I have like a big stack that I read, so I pulled off, pulled out the ones that I put markers in uh, for us to read. And there's no way we're going to go through all of these. Um, definitely going to read a couple from here. There's a couple of stacks, uh, three stacks actually. Uh, but we'll see where we go. We'll see where we go. Looking forward to this. Me too. Me too. Me too. It's very chill. I've been doing a lot of reading. Owler, God, how are you doing? Comic book reading time. Woo, woo, woo. Fun. I've been doing a lot of comic book readings in the last few months. And I'm still going through. Aside from buying like this, uh, I'll show you guys. The Trouble with Girls. Um, we got it from a comic book haul. Uh, because I came across it randomly and it really intrigued me and it's bloody hilarious uh but most of these comics are the 25 cent comics that i bought like a year and a half ago two years ago and i'm still going through them There's, i bought a few hundred 25 cent comic books that a comic book shop local was dumping so um i'm loving going <laughs> through them i've done so much reading it's fantastic i have like three different reading spots in the house that you know uh, you know, I grab comic, read it, grab comic, read it, grab comic, read it if I want to chill. Um, and I've come across a lot of uh, nice little fine segments, some really long comic books I would like to read, like full issues and stuff. Uh, but I think uh, sort of just enjoying reading little segments, giving everyone a taste of, uh, you know, different types of stories that you can read in comics, right? It's just fantastic. Uh, super fun super fun and there's so much to them so much to them uh so i highlighted a few um we're going to give people a few minutes to roll in about 10 minutes but we're going to get into the readings pretty fast uh no longer than 10 minutes uh, hopefully notifications will go out uh until then i'm going to do my little intro uh if you need drinks get your drinks get your snacks ready i'm only drinking tea i'm not no snacks when i'm reading comic books and stuff even though these are pretty roughed up some of them uh, i still don't eat when i'm in general reading comics nick's boy first time chat how are you doing hi from ireland ireland right on chicho hope you're having a great sunday indeed you as well brother you as well or sister of course right love the irish love the irish i spent five days in ireland uh, back in 1998 uh, that was a good time very interesting time very interesting uh, few few weeks after good friday agreements uh so it was very cool on charter days i need to get uh, back to reading comic books boy how are you doing yes yeah on charter days i um what happened with me by the way uh, i stepped away sunday happy sunday cheryl <laughs> hope you're doing well no eating near comics yeah no eating near comics right um just to let you know there was a period there where i wasn't reading comic books uh and i don't know it's just i just stopped reading comic books right it just slowly just stopped reading comic books and there was a few years there where i wasn't reading any comic books and then i went into an eyeglass store i for glasses because my partner wears glasses she want to check out some of the glasses we're going to go to a movie right and she says oh let's just go in here we've got some time i just want to check out some glasses frames and stuff I go, oh sure let's go okay nixie boy what bit of ireland uh i'm from uh Derry, up the north uh or ireland it's an amazing place yeah i went to cork i've been to dublin i've been to belfast uh, those are the three places i went to 
uh, it was super cool very fun very fun cork was crazy busy uh very lots of youth back then 1998 right and back then condoms were illegal in ireland <laughs> crazy population boom maybe <laughs> Uh, Chicho in North Ireland in April, uh, May 1998. Yeah, yeah. Around, around. Was it around then? I can't remember now. But 1998. Yeah, yeah. It was super cool. j Pal, how are you doing? And uh, we went into the eyeglasses store. My partner was looking at my eyeglasses. And I think she mentioned, hey, you know, you're not reading too much stuff. Do you want to check out some reading glasses? And I put on my, the first pair of reading glasses. And I got some text they gave me some like printed and i went oh what right like it was clear the reason i stopped reading comics because the pages were starting to get blurry so i couldn't it was getting harder and i didn't know this subconsciously i just stopped reading comic books right and i stopped reading a lot of books in general and then when i got the gra glasses just the world opened up again and i started reading comic books started reading books again i was just doing most of my reading online right so gang if you find that you're not reading either comic books or books and stuff like this go get your eyes checked you might need reading glasses and then when you get reading glasses you do this <laughs> right i'm very grateful for us that we had time to go inside the eyeglasses store otherwise i wouldn't have gone right plutonic plurist great streams via um modem back then <laughs> finish dude yeah create no streams ascii <laughs> ascii ascii finals <laughs> finish dude how are you doing hope you're doing well oh god good friday agreement signed april 10th 1998 april 10th 1998 cool cool that's when it was signed. I think it was in Ireland in uh, September, either September or October 1998, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, your arms got too short. Da, 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 da. My arms got too short. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My arms got too short for reading. <laughs> Is that what you mean, Cheryl? Hello, uh, Smix let's check this out oh, God. i actually need to take my uh glasses off for reading ah okay okay i got good farsight uh vision so that's really good Putapa, so they knew that chicho was uh coming to ireland and prepared a peace deal <laughs> funny on try i read more comic uh, mo i read more com more books these days than comics now but have an urge to get back into it cool i'm reading way more comics now i'm reading most of my doing most of my text reading online but uh physical reading comic books almost exclusively right now i need to get it back into the books as well uh gang quick intro i'm on patreon substack subscribe star you can follow the work there we are live streaming on twitch okay so um Thank you for being here <laughs> on these live streams. Uh, for those of you that are supporting this work on these platforms, as well as the handful of people that are still supporting this work on SensorTube, and those of you that are supporting this work through other means, uh, crypto, PayPal, whatever it is, uh, sharing, liking, coming to our live streams. Again, thank you very much for the support. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this finished to i'm uh, i'm doing good just a little burnt uh, just got home an hour an hour ago we were camping with family for midsummer or as we know it ta -ta -ta, johannes jo johannes johannes is that what you call it midsummer cool yeah coming home from camping is exhausting like you get tired you need to sleep a lot hopefully you fall in, fall asleep when we're doing the readings comic book dreams are fantastic all i got i'm a lazy reader these days i use a text text reading app with real voice i do as well mine is more computer voice it's not a real voice it's a computer voice that's reading it uh, but i like it i like it cheryl oh yes i got my eyes checked this week because i couldn't uh 
quite hold things far enough away to focus double sad when playing uh, trombone uh, can't see the music through my progressives so I turn them uh, upside down so now I'm old enough to have everyday glasses and then special special readers for practicing ha huh? I haven't got to everyday glasses yet I hope I don't get there to tell you the truth, sure. I, I like not wearing glasses it was a lot easier reading comic books or books when you're laying down without glasses because when you roll over and stuff you gotta adjust this and and whatnot plutonic flows happy belated midsummer summer to all indeed indeed and uh, finish dude is that the name there's a movie that's out where they go on is it called no something else where they go to this sort of cult community for solstice i guess it's midsummer or something and i believe the whole story is they eat mushrooms and trip out uh is that the plutonic upside down boy you turn me inside out all around around that's uh boy george i think isn't it you turn me in how did it go oh my god i tried contact lenses but they were so annoying oh god I, contact lenses finished to for two days we grilled and went to sauna then to a lake and repeat 10 times oof good for the body great for the soul exhausting exhausting wicker man gang i do announce these live streams 30 minutes an hour before we go live on twitter minds vk gap getter and uh substack notes we do have a soundcloud page where we upload some of the live streams as podcasts and we have a gilded server you're definitely welcome to join us on gilded gang i'm going to take these down two minutes past the intro that i wanted to do and gang as always salute to the mods salute to the mods salute to the mods salute to the mods chicho you mean Sis, sisu is that what it is i can't remember i'm so bad with names oh wait no i was thinking of you spin me right round baby right round yeah that's what i was thinking that was that's what i was saying you spin me right round baby right round spin me that who is that is that who is that nice song nice song hello i'm a snake how are you doing salutations hello Ms. Snake. do you think indie comics will surpass the fame of dc and marvel um for some yeah for some they have but marvel uh what do you call it disney owns them so they're propagating you know marketing up the yin yang right and then dc as a time warner that owns them so they have the money to promote it but some of the best uh or really good tv and movies have been made based on independent comic books and people knowingly on or unknowingly i guess uh, some of their favorite tv series and movies are based on independent comic books uh right like umbrella academy uh, independent from uh, dark horse i believe it came out um uh, look at the Mark Miller stuff. Uh, look at History of Violence. Uh, so many, so many, right? But it's a bigger risk to create, uh, you know, it's not the formula that they use. Gang, should we get into reading? Let me show you what we got. Let me show you what we got. And what happens in general? I haven't been loading these full live streams onto Sensor 2, but I think we will. Uh, this time around uh, I've usually been taking segments of uh, the readings but I'll make a little note of when we I didn't bring my pen and paper oh well <laughs> uh, we'll make a little note when the reading start and we'll just uh, mention it what the fuck double O's or O seven. 7 salutation Shicho it's been a while just stopped by a comic shop and picked up bloodshot issue number two nice I is it a new series that's come out are they putting out a whole new bloodshot uh, uh, 
was it series mini series kill chat oh kill chat on screen good thank you for the reminder elder god thank you for the reminder uh indie comics had uh, such an underrated impact yeah for sure like men in black right like huge uh alien there's a what's that called uh alien nation uh anyway there's a lot of them there's so much not a new series okay the older one okay thanks for i i haven't been gone to a comic book store for a few months now <laughs> it is what it is right gang i'm gonna kill this video this uh this camera okay we're, i'm just gonna give you a rundown of what we're gonna read really speedy gonzalez and then we're gonna get into the readings okay uh because more reading the better uh less chicho more comic books okay um i'm gonna kill this i'm gonna kill the notifications as well and i'm killing the chat gang okay so take a look at this <laughs> elder god i like to be useful you're amazing elder god uh so check this out uh as i promised we're gonna read uh shade the changing man i got two two things i want to read with shade changing man i actually have three things i actually had more things but we can't just you know we could focus it on all on shade but we won't okay so for example this one is an amazing fantastic read uh shade the changing man uh peter milligan okay um was the writer and this is origin of shade super good read and fantastic fantastic like look at the covers on this thing and very deep very to a certain degree dark okay the american scream right the madness kicking in like look at it like so cool so cool so cool so cool right ochiha no snacks with comic books right and then this one we did uh check out this one I, i'm missing number three by the way i picked all these up for 25 cents right it shade number one number two number three wasn't there <laughs> so i've read number three before i can't remember it but this is uh, uh was super cool regarding the assassination of jfk and i read this pretty shortly after reading the uh, jfk trading cards the assassination of jfk trading cards right fantastic the initial covers and then at some point it changed to the vertical and very trippy lots of symbolism you got the pyramid the eye out of sight pretty cool this one was funny it, fantastic fantastic reads but we're just going to read uh the segment for vertigo jam that came out in 1993 uh regarding shade and this has got a lot of characters we're going to read a few pages from shade number 49 okay we're going to read a couple of pages and we looked at this at comic book hall the trouble with girls cheryl you don't want to miss this elder god you don't want to miss this <laughs> okay we're going to read just a two or three pages from number one and two or three pages from number two okay and if we have time i have a whole bunch of stuff highlighted here there's no way we're gonna look at all these uh just things that we can read okay we'll see hopefully we'll have time but i don't know okay maybe we'll get to this one at least uh nice uh you know when did this come out 70s it came out in the 70s pretty sure in the 70s yeah 76 okay uh nice alien story uh sort of anyway it's cool okay so i'm gonna put these guys on one side I'm gonna put troubles with girls on one side. For sure, we're gonna read trouble with girls. Uh, yeah, Plutonic Plurus. Shade number forty-one is one before shade number fifty, right? And it, I, it this is shade number fifty. Fan, a fantastic read. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers. Very powerful very powerful right um i haven't read 51 yet 
okay i gotta find it in my collection i i didn't have 51 the 25 cents so i gotta be able to drag it out somewhere uh, i don't know when i'll get to it i might actually end up buying shade uh, online again instead of going through my comic books to read it okay um, but what we're going to do first, we're going to read Vertigo Jam. And this is what they put out with this was basically the DC Comics was spinning off uh, some of their titles, mature titles to a secondary, you know, insignia or whatever you call it, calling it DC Vertigo, which was more mature readers. Uh, dealt with horror science fiction um, not too much fantasy but science fiction and horror and mature readers and this thing came out in 1993 okay and on the cover it's got you see kid eternity you got sandman here you got swamp thing in the window there okay you got john constantine hellblazer you got animal man that's shade right there that's a jack i want to get one of those jackets okay shade and this is doom patrol right so it's got short stories from each one and i highlighted three of them but we're going to read the shade one and then we're going to read shade number 49 okay so let me move these guys to one side and have a read through this now the odds are we're not going to look at all the details of what all these comics are uh yeah elder god i'm still not going to the comic book store um, and it's just just don't feel it right now and I have a few hundred more comics to go through maybe when I run out of comics these 25 cent comics I'll go back uh, but not right now not right now um, just not into it okay uh, J. Pao Shisho have you read the comic series regarding the matter of Oswald's body no no I haven't it's from Boom I believe it was five books really cool uh, this, uh, link it up uh, in our gilded server uh, and I'll maybe try to track it down right look at the camera is going crazy with this trying to focus gang let's have a read through this okay so this is vertigo jam and it was sort of uh, promoting the vertigo uh, titles for DC comics right uh, louder than noise and i believe they put out something before this as well this is vertical jam number one uh, but i think there was another one they put out um, sort of a vertical mishmash of things okay uh, we're gonna skip and this is the sandman the sandman story was really good as well okay so sandman and it goes through boing, 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 boing. Uh, Milligan, McKeever, Extremis, and it, very good story, very good story. Okay, and then we got John Constantine Hellblazer, Black Orchids, fantastic read. Okay, whoop, whoop. you go through, and it's got Animal Man in here too. Animal, this one was really good. It was a toss up between reading this one, Animal Man. Okay, really liked it. Um, and then there's Doom Patrol and Doom Patrol TV series is super good um, and then Swamp Thing was a great read as well I really like this one but then I decided to go with uh, Kid Attorney was really cool too this is Kid Attorney okay. I like Kid Attorney very trippy very weird but we're going to read Shade uh, little promo uh, that they were pushing okay so this is uh, 1993 written by Peter Milligan and art by Mike Alred right um, okay huge 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 madman comic books right so let's have a little look at the panel division right there's a guy lying at the tree bike right and these are the two main uh, three main characters in the shade story arc uh the series the, that's shade 
right there and then his two sidekicks <laughs> to a certain degree you'll find out who they are you'll find out who they are okay so the story starts off let's see if we can get this thing focused the ambulance should be here in five minutes there was a gas station half a mile down the road and they let me use their phone how is he not good in fact not good at all in fact he died about three minutes ago she says and that's Jenny and the other one is uh, oh man names Kathy I believe okay we'll confirm that as the story goes and this is the dead person laid down on the foot of the tree big smile on his face shade and just so you know uh, it's good to know shade is actually pretty much insane right in a weird way in a cool way oh he looks happy he's smiling she says of course he's smiling shade shade the illusionist made sure of that she says I don't understand I don't understand is this going to disgust me she says and then shade replies all I did was give him what he wished for a little um, mass massaging of reality so it conformed to what he wanted I gave him a vision that's the what's the harm in that shade replies the harm in that father Williams died believing a lie she says father Williams he regained consciousness shade replies just before he lost it for good he said he had a history of heart problems that's not the only thing he had a history of she says she's not very happy well I think Lenny is wrong and it was it was a very nice thing you did shade you gave him some comfort no matter how how strong his faith was he must have had some fear as his death approached she says shade So what if it was uh, an ex-Nazi we found dying here? Do we get shade to give him a vision of the New, uh, Nuremberg rally just to make his passing a little more pleasant? How about if I hum, hummed some Wagner? Lenny says, that's not the same Lenny. my grandmother died when I was 14 14 and on her deathbed she asked everyone whether they thought there was a God and a heaven even though most of them didn't believe it everyone said yes Lenny says Except you, of course. Lenny replies, No, I was a coward too. I said, Of course, Grandma. There's a God and a heaven, 
and Grandpa will be waiting for you there. I felt sick afterwards. When I die, I don't want lies, Lenny says. But Lenny, but Lenny, you're getting this out of proportion. He was an old man, she says. He was a priest and he spent his entire life feeding people pie in, in the sky. He didn't deserve to have it confirmed. Particularly after what he told us. Hold on. What did he tell you? She asks. I think he was, uh, what's the term? Confessing his sins, Shade says. And one thing you should know about Shade, his origin is from another planet, another realm. And the realm is called Meta. So he's not familiar with all the traditions of Earth. Okay. But he only had a few minutes, so he probably just sc scraped the barrel when he says. Look at the guy's face. Great artwork. Alred. Shade says, when his eyes opened, he looked up at us. He held Lenny's hand and started to talk about his life. He'd been a priest for most of it. And then we go to the past a few minutes. The priest is talking. It's been a terrible and wicked life I've led, the priest said. Keep quiet and save your strength, Lenny replies. Our friend has gone to get help. No, the priest replies. I have to say this while I have the chance. I was on my way to confession, finally to say the truth. I won't make it now. You're, you'll, you're all I have. We're not really qualified, Lenny replies. That doesn't matter, the priest says. Listen, I've been weak. I've been a disgrace to the church, the cloth to our Lord himself. Uh, I mean, hey, you can't have <laughs> been that bad, Lenny replies. The priest, don't you believe it, girl? Guess how many m women I've had? No, don't guess. I'll tell you, 32, 32, 15 of those were married one one was only 16 he says oh oh my god i've been so so wicked i stole money from the collection box and gambled it all on horses. I drank like a fish and smoked like a chimney, but it was the women. I was the, it was the women who were my weakness, the priest says. Oh God, the women. And the worst is I used my position of trust, of authority to seduce them. Not that some of them weren't past seducing me, of course god no but i was the one who was ultimately responsible the priest says <laughs> lenny calm and cool lights up a cigarette she's a chain smoker the priest continues and then i'd stand up and rant about chastity and the sanctity of marriage Shit, none of us are perfect uh, 
Lenny says. You're, you're being ironic, good. Be as hard as you like. I don't deserve kindness, the priest says. But why have I been so bad? Have I been testing him? Oh, is that it? Have I been saying, hey, God, if you're up there, you should be striking me down with lightning for what I've what I'm getting up to. Is that what I was doing? The priest says. Maybe you just liked having sex with women. As simple as that, Shade replies. You're right. I'm trying to explain away my less, less, less viciousness. But, but if only he'd struck me down, if only he'd punished me in some way, the priest says. <laughs> but no, I've lived a charmed life. All that uh, fornication and drunkenness and gambling, and I never once got caught. I've uh, prospered. I'm 89 and have never had a day's illness in my life apart from the odd heart murmur. He sunk, he sunk into a kind of a sleep then. We thought he died. But then his eyes were open again. Oh, he's crying. He was weeping. He was really crying. His his uh, his eyes out. Hypocritical old lecher, Lenny says. Boy, talk about carrying a heavy load. She comes, she comes in, right. Anyway, now you see why he didn't deserve any illusions. I wouldn't have minded him being uh, rep reprobate so long as he hadn't chastised others for being reprobates all his life. I don't know, she says. I think in some way it was an even nicer gesture knowing what he must have been going through yeah that's what i thought shade said by now he was getting weaker he was rambling on and on about his sins but it was hard to follow i just caught an occasional reference to naked flesh and the ten commandments He was slipping away fast, but he could still see. So I thought, why not? Why not help the poor old bastard on his way out? His eyes started to light up as I went to work with my madness. There was a brightness in them and all the worry and all the guilt seemed to fade away as he gazed at the vision I was making for him. <laughs> uh. 
I mean, I know it was wrong, but why not give a dying man what he wants? Satan. He's being punished. Look at him. He's so happy. Yes. Well, he didn't, he didn't deserve it. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I say. Look at that smile. He looks so smug and self-satisfied. I think he just looks very peaceful. says at the end that ambulance has taken his time isn't it the end that's one of the shade stories on a it's it's the humor in shade is fantastic by the way it's dark um, there's very heavy topics in shade the changing man which we're about to look at for issue number what's this one barbecue toad we're going to take a look at just a few pages from dc's vertigo uh shade the changing man number 49 okay and this was part five i believe this was a, a season in hell okay this is part five so we're not going to give too much spoilers uh in this okay i believe this is a six issue uh story arc that ends part six with number 50. this is shade the changing man number 50 and this is a very important issue okay very important issue uh, much happens in this to many of the main characters okay that's the only spoiler i'm going to give you and the titles of these things of number 50 is love labors lost love's labor lost but let's have a read through issue number 49 just a few pages and just to let you know in this issue the conversation we're gonna read is the conversation between shade and in issue 49 his partner the blonde girl that you see here okay so these are the two characters that are the main characters in the few pages that we're about to read okay and this character let me show you that's her right there okay and they meet up basically in either the first or second issue of shade the changing man when the series first began so shade and um the girl is Kathy. It's gotta be Kathy. Like the name is skipping me right now. Um, but they're both right from the get go. They're uh, they're there. Okay. Oh, Elder God's coming in. Love's labor lost is Shakespeare missing manuscript. Really. I have no idea. Wow, wow, wow. Very cool, very cool. So let's put this one away. And we're picking up in sort of mid story here. And the only background you need to know for this, the only background you need to know for this is that they're together. Okay. 
and this $20 bill that is going to be the central focus of the story has been appearing in the last few issues at random points where she has been looking at it and thinking and talking to herself and all we know so far we don't know anything about this $20 bill other than it was important to her and it is important to her okay that's it and all we're gonna do is read like uh, I think it's like five pages okay and I titled this thing the bookmark is life and this is the hotel they've been staying in And they own the hotel, by the way. It's not its not an open hotel. It's just they own the hotel and they live there. It's strange how the hotel has been so hot recently. Yet now, the air around it is so cold, the steam hangs from their mouths like comic book word balloons. The west wings untouched. We could move back move back in right away shade says no i don't want to stay here tonight i just want to pick up a few things from my room and just so you know there's there was a fire in the hotel in the previous issue okay and she's going into the hotel to pick something up or some stuff up and shade is waiting outside The bill seems oddly crisper than usual, but old Hickory's face is still intact. Unlike poor Shimmy's. And Shimmy is another character in the, in the story arc. And then they go back to the hotel they're staying at right now later in adjoining but separate rooms motel faced she stares at the bill The first time I saw it, I was just 17 years old, she says. So, what's so important about it? Shade asks. I could find out, you know. I could eat it or something and intuitively know its rel relevance to you. Now, keep in mind, they're partners right now she's actually pregnant with shade's child i know she says but it's going to sound really stupid good i need something really stupid right now shade says well i was at a party i didn't want to be at with my parents whom i didn't particularly want to be with it's hard to admit when your parents are dead that there was times when you couldn't stand them she says looking at the $20 bill remembering the past the party was up was at one of their friends houses and the average age was about 90 we were fighting I forgot what we were fighting about but at the time I was the most important thing 
in the world. It was the most important thing in the world. The point of it was that they were treating me like a child, a little girl. I said something about chains or or straight jackets or fascism, which as they were good liberals always managed to piss them off. I left them and went to cool off in the garden, which was the size of a small farm. It was a beautiful night, but I didn't see it. This guy was smoking a joint down by a really uh, cutesy ornamental pond. He was about my age. I didn't say a word to him, not a single word. When I sat down beside him, he handed me the joint as though I'd been there all along. He blew smoke out of one nostril, then the other. I was impressed, though I tried not to show it. Five minutes later we were doing it we still hadn't said a word he didn't even bother taking we didn't even bother taking our clothes off I was smiling partly because I was a little high but mostly because I was thinking about my parents in the in the house and what they would think if they could see me now this is me I thought I'm liberated I do what I want she says we still hadn't said a word as the boy hitched up his pants he pushed the hand into a pocket. He pulled something out. It was a $20 bill and he threw it at me. He threw it at me and turned and walked away. And I just sat there holding the bill, staring at it, not believing it. The bastard had changed everything. It was no longer an act of liberation, a sign of my own self-determination. He turned it into something grubby. I'd had sex for money. There I was thinking I made some kind of brilliant gesture and he turns around and pisses on it so it's the past forget it shade says but it's not just the past she replies all we seem to be are empty gestures look at shimmy today 
He tries to save Lily, who finds her own way out and ends up getting torched for his efforts. An empty gesture, that's all, she says. You're blowing things out of proportion, Kathy. That's my job, Shade replies. No, and look at me, and this baby, whatever I think, whatever I try to do, life might just turn around and, and hitch up its pants and throw me a $20 bill, she says. What are you doing, Shade replies. Another empty, empty gesture. What else? I could bring myself, I could bring myself to do this before, she says. She can feel herself crying as she throws the bill away. It's always a melancholy occasion when you let go of the past, however unsavory that past might be. Another piece of old skin, the dead, a little more dead. She really has no idea quite what or whom she's crying for. Take your pick, she thinks. Take your pick. I thought that was very powerful. Okay. I thought that was very powerful. And I thought that was a good mix of the humor side of Shade the Changing Man with the priests and the devil. Right? And the human aspect of it. Okay. Great series if you're into reading something mature something fantastical really uh on charter day says great artwork great artwork great artwork and very trippy uh, the artists change slightly uh, from certain story arcs but amazing artwork amazing artwork okay so moving from that from Shade the Changing Man to a comic book reading or a comic book haul we did. Cheryl, yes, definitely reflects ethics under exploration 1990s. Indeed, like Shade the Changing Man, brilliant. Uh, Shade the Changing Man, uh, Vertigo Comics, gang, just, just a follow up. Vertigo Comics from DC were the probably aside from some independent comic books and some superhero stuff that was coming out which was whatever vertigo uh, and uh, dark horse as well but vertigo for the big two dc and marvel was probably putting out the best comic books out there okay in the 1990s uh, and all of these issues uh, titles were worth reading all of them So, from Shade, let's go to The Trouble with Girls. Okay, and this is a comic book haul we did um, a couple of months ago, I guess, two or three months ago, and there's more issues to this. Okay, uh, I read these, and this is these, these two were from the first series of Trouble with Girls. And Girls is actually this guy's last name, right? so the trouble with him and his family right that's what it really is um, 
And so these two were from the first two series. This was a standalone, sort of gives a little background, linked up some some of the past and the present together. And then this was uh, sort of a standalone four issue series. OK, and it came out on Epic Comics and this was Eternity Comics. And these ones were for Malibu. Malibu Eternity were sort of the handoff, I believe, was from Malibu to Eternity. OK, and then Epic Comics, I believe that was the order that things went right. And those three issues were not bad. They were good. But this is these four issues, this four issue miniseries really got me uh, appreciating this character a lot and the story arc and the writing a lot. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to read like around three pages from issue number one and around three pages from issue number two. Uh, I think that's a good and it, it believe it or not, it doesn't even it's not even reading anything based on the main character. OK. It, it it's not even based it, it's not he's not even in the pages that we're going to read because the story even though it is about him okay revolving around girls it's all the other characters as well which really add that that extra that comic books need to become fantastic okay now this came out what year did this come out this came out in 1993 again okay and all you need to know about girls is he's it's a james bond type of character fantastic uh like a conan the barbarian and james bond put together and uh he's unbeatable and and with all the amazing stuff that happens to him he actually doesn't want this this character wants to live in a little shack with a partner and read his book. That's all he wants. He doesn't want all this glamour, all this fantasy, all these women, all this money. He doesn't want it. OK, and I'll leave it at that. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to read. These pages. Okay. We're going to read this, this, and just three pages from here. Should we start off with four pages? Yeah, let's let's start off from the break. Let's start it off from here. This is girls, and that's his dad, by the way. Okay. And him and him are very much alike, and neither of them wanted the life that was handed to them, right? So, for example, in here, he goes... That's all I want that. But look what I what I'm stuck with. Right. So he's got all these expensive cars living in a mansion. But in the previous issue, he says all he wants to do is sit in a hammock and read his book. OK. Read his book. So let's read just four pages from issue number one. This would not go over well in today's woke society. Coincidentally, in Caracas. Right? So we break away from the main story revolving around girls. Well, there it is. But I still don't see what the big deal is about a co uh, convent. Don't forget who's running that convent, Agent Flanders. As long as she was in retreat on her island, mom wasn't worried about her. But now that she's building this, this uh, growing cult, you've made your point, Silas. It's Silas in the bedroom, baby. It's Agent Marner in the field. And mom is sort of like a shield type of agent. Uh, okay. Um, sort of organization for Marvel Comics. Uh, 
Let's go check it out, he says. They scoot into the convent. Agent sent by mom to check out a supervillain. Wait a minute, these are nuns. Why not? The most decadent, twisted, and perverse super villainous in the world can corrupt anything. to go head to head with her he says <laughs> before you get all hot and bothered don't don't forget that we're here to track that kid kidnapped botanist she says yeah yeah so let's see what we can learn from a little eavesdropping damn these nails are so long it takes all morning just to paint them and Christ they make it so hard to use your hands they always get tangled in these peekaboo peekaboo undies we have to wear the nun says hush you know it's for our, our spiritual well-being the other nun replies You know that uh, religious ascetics have always mortified, mortified their bodies to liberate their souls. And Mother Superior says we have to be morally strong for the new world order that she's creating. Okay, okay, the nun says. I understand how we will be brought closer to God by suffering six inch stilettos uh, stiletto heels and endless applications of makeup and these incredibly tight body suits that work their way up your you know what but this business of sleeping with every man who looks at us there I draw the line she says But sister, I thought you used to be the Hellcat of, of Twin Oaks. I was, but you know Mother Superior says we can only do the things that make the man feel good. This, this is grotesque. She's turning these poor women into the ultimate boy toys yeah so where does the grotesque part come in he says of course the botanist she's forcing them to develop some kind of mind control drug no woman would do this to herself voluntarily no he says didn't i ever tell you about that little uh, car hop in Texas we go back to the nun let me tell you the next time a man makes me use mashed potatoes I'm at a hold voice comes in that's the mother superior coming in with her whip How dare you doubt the celestial wisdom of your mother superior?
You must do penance, she says. No, Mother Superior, not, not that. For a full month, you must pretend to hold no opinions of your, your own when in the company of men. No, she says. The secret agent can't take it anymore. You fiend, now you've gone too far. No, Molly, keep your head. You crazy fool, kid. takes on the mother superior dolt you think I carried this whip merely as an instrument of sexual titillation whips the gun out of her hand do you think I need a gun to defeat your kind I'll show you what we women who respect our bodies and ourselves can do I she jumps in Do what? Die ignorably at my hands? Crash. But first you will tell me who sent you. Ha, you think I tell you I'm no bum? I keep mum. Fine. What better way to keep mum than to die? Crash. Kills her. So that's just three pages from issue number one. This conversation is hilarious. Fantastic read. Okay. If you're into humor, humor, good art, uh, intelligent conversation, slapstick to a certain degree, and uh, sort of critiques society in a big way. Okay. And then we'll go to issue number two. And we're going to continue on with the mother superior. And what we see in this issue, let me find the pages. <laughs> There's like mud wrestling girls. <laughs> and what we see is sort of an infiltration of a reporter into the mom and uh, not mom the mother superior sort of hydra type of uh, organization right and we're going to pick up just a, another segment here okay actually is this one where he's infiltrated i'm not sure we'll read it we'll read it we gather here tonight, sisters, to welcome a novice to our swelling ranks, to usher, usher, usher her into our mighty army. And she's planning on conquering the world, by the way, just so you know. Got the nuns on their knees. <laughs> this would make a great movie. <laughs> we who are destined to rule the world and who grow strong through rigorous self humiliation now welcome Sister Pandora. Sister Pandora. Here comes Sister Pandora. Come to your mother, Superior, dear, that she may send you off on your first mission. <laughs> Which movie studio has the cojones to make this movie? <laughs> hey! 
be silent, smack child. For humiliation is the true path to righteousness and sexual humiliation, humiliation will be the weapon you wield. Oh, and why should I want to distribute all this tobacco your boss is selling? Because I'll be, I'll be your utterly, uh, utterly pliable, shameless sex slave if you do. That's why she says. I'll help you live out your most disgusting, depraved fantasies and enjoy every minute of it or suffer through it if such is your preference, she says. <laughs> Cheryl, like Bakur Banzai meets strippers, Cheryl says. I'll be your toy your ornament, your garbage pail. I'll never speak out of turn. And if I speak at all, it will only be to echo your opinions or to moan in pleasure or pain as per your instructions, she says. Oh yeah? Well, I say you can never trust abroad. How deep, she says. You're all brainless, emotional bitches. Why, I never thought of that, she replies. They all think between their gams. My, you're really quite the philosopher, she says. <laughs> Hot damn, you are every man's dream girl. Now, you want to know what I want to do with you, little girl? Buzz, 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 whisper, 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 whisper. What? That's the most revolting thing I've ever heard, she replies. So, shall we do it on the floor or on your desk? <laughs> she asks. <laughs> and then this just continues, gang. This just continues. It's just... <laughs> this part is hilarious as well. <laughs> Should we read this too? Let's read these three pages as well. <laughs> we gotta read this. This gang, these next three pages, okay. This is 1993. 1993. 1993. Right? Fast forward to 2023. Okay. We're 30 years. From when this was written 30 years from when this was written okay <laughs> gang we're gonna read this ready two nuns from the mother superiors organization geez that sister Pandora is doing such a great job that mother superior is giving her all the juiciest assignments one of the nuns says, yeah, I hear she gets humiliated twice a day. So we better make sure we don't flop this flop, this job. Don't, don't I know it, but where are we going to find a non-smoker in Caracas? We could snatch a child, one of them asks or says no 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 mother superior says it has to be an adult one of those bellicosa politically correct liberal fascist anti-smokers <laughs> but where but where in in sensual life loving vice ridden south america are we going to wait a minute 
Look over there, she says. <laughs> Earth's first t-shirt. believe how the men treat their women here the guy thinks uh, and the women always concerned about looking pretty it's so depressing he he says look at this litter no environmental consciousness at all and no speed bumps in the streets <laughs> he's wearing socks with sandals <laughs> perfect but what do they what do they care they don't care about their children here they let them play with toy guns don't these people know about pro-social instructional toys he's coughing louder and louder what incest ins <laughs> insensitive reactionaries they don't even respect my polite hints to put out their despicable uh carcinogens oh why did i ever leave berkeley <laughs> the nuns are like bingo <laughs> they kidnap the guy they kidnap him they tie him up in a chair. They brought him to Mother Superior. No, no, kill me first. Kill me first. Just don't make me smoke, he says. There we go. Now, observe what happens to the subject when we inject him with the serum LSMFP100. Hot nuns. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Will it, will it be a swift, painless death, he says? Beautiful artwork, beautiful artwork. Give me, give me, give me, give me that. He says, yelling. He wants the smoke. Let's see if we can get this thing focused. There we go. Ha 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 snap he's free going for the cigarettes at last snatches the smoke ah nicotine sweet nicotine i've come a long way baby puff 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 you see my sisters you see Nothing can stop us now. Not the CIA, not the KGB, not even mom. Nothing. Just so long as that accursed Lester girls doesn't somehow get involved. Right. <laughs> this is Lester girls. <laughs> No, you're not losing your mind. But maybe the lizard lady, and this is the lizard lady, by the way. This is the lizard lady. The lizard lady, how does she hope to conquer the world with fast growing tobacco leaves? Right. This is a great, great four issue.
comic book series. It was a fantastic read. Oh yeah, who were the creators? Of, well, not the creators, the writer. Um, here we go. I mean, look at the inks on this, right? Uh, where's the writer? Trouble the minister, editor in chief, editor, uh, letter, colorist, inker, penciler. There we go. Will Jacobs, Will Jacobs, Chubador, Chubador, Chubadora, <laughs> Brute, uh, Blue, Bluence, with Russ Williams as the penciler. Al Williamson is the inker. Steve Matheson, the colorist for this. Okay. And the letter is John Constanza. We got to get the name of the creators in this, right? We got to get the name of the creators in this. So fantastic read. Highly recommend if you're into this type of humor. Um, Heavy Hitters, Epic Comics, okay, uh, from 1993, uh, The Trouble with Girls, four-issue miniseries. And we looked at this, the covers, in uh, the comic book haul that we did for this, right? <sighs> Surgeon General's Warning. Warning, reading this material may cause severe laughter in politically correct-minded individuals in spite of themselves, right? In spite of themselves. Uh, I think every woke person should be forced <laughs> to read this in 2023 to read this four-issue miniseries. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious super fun super fun how are we doing for time how are we doing for time gang let's read an old school book let's read an old school book we're gonna get time to read one book right we're gonna read a book from 1970s are we good with that are we good with that let's read a book from 1970s let's see what else we got here uh, which story is this? Let me check to see what, what I highlighted here. Oh, this is, I highlighted this because of this. Uh, Cheryl, if you're still here, uh, check this out. Because we're trying to find, oh, and this was, uh, oh, yeah, this is a price guide too. I wanted to show you guys this. So check this out. This is a laser eraser uh, and uh, press, I can't, I couldn't read the, I can't read the titles here. Laser eraser and press button okay and this was a good read it was a fun read okay and this is issue number four and i read uh, i think two or three issues of this and it was a fun read but a couple of things i highlighted here just to show you guys uh, one of the things that we talked about before cheryl was asking as well i came across this advertisement right and this is a book put out by eclipse comics uh, women and the comics uh, by Trina I haven't tracked this down yet I, I highlighted it just to remind myself women and the comics okay by Trina Robbins and Catherine uh, Ronwad right and here's a description for it uh, women in the comics cartoonist Tina uh, Tina Robbins and comic book editor Kathleen Yarnwood have researched and written the first book about women's contributions to the uniquely American art form of comics, a chronological survey from the turn of the century to the present. Women and the comics is a profusely illustrated, profusely illustrated, illustrated with examples from the cartoon, cartoon art of Rose O'Neill, the Cupsy, Grace Drayton, Campbell Soup Kids, Dale Missick, Brenda Starr. Oh, Brenda Starr. I have Brenda Starr. Marge H uh, Henderson, mm -hmm. Belle, Little Lulu. Cool, cool. I have some Little Lulu. Uh, Nisa McNeil and many, many more, right? So it looks like this book. And this book came out in... Uh, 
let's see, 1986, right? So this book came out in 1986 from Eclipse Comics. Again, we've read Eclipse Comics books before, which are fantastic, right? Uh, so I thought I would just, you know, highlight this. Cheryl, if you're into it or anyone else, if you track this book down, please, uh, I keep on trying to remember to do this, but I get, keep on getting lost. Please link it up in our Gilded server on their comic books. Uh, I would like to get my hands on this book as well. I'm going to try to do, do, to do this, hopefully during the editing uh, of this live stream when I take out these segments, maybe. Uh, if I do, I might just load this up uh, entirely. I've got to do the timestamps for them. But I'll remember to do this, okay? So, Women and the Comics by Trina Robbins and Catherine Yordwood. Okay. Something to track down. Something to track down. And one other thing I highlighted here, which was super cool, and it's from Eclipse Comics, right? Check this out. Direct marketing comic books. And this is books that you could have bought in 1986, right? 1986. And it's got price guide of some of the books that they were selling, right? Amazing Spider-Man 137 to 200 uh, for $2. 201 to all these for a dollar, dollar served by American flag. But up, but up, but it's got a lot of prices here, right? Super cool, super cool. We've looked at price tags before, uh, price guys before, uh, but I thought I would sort of show this as well, right? Just in case anyone's interested. GI Joe number one for 975. Check out GI Joe number two for $35. So GI Joe number two in 1986 was selling for $35 while number one was selling for 975. And then GI Joe, one of the most expensive GI Joe comics is GI Joe number 21, which is the silent issue. And here they were selling it for $3, right? So some of these comics haven't gone up in price. If anything, you could pretty much get them in dollar bin store, uh, dollar bins or whatnot, right? What's this? Marvel fanfare and stuff. But check this out. Oh, Elder God, you rock. Uh, Elder God just posted our here. You know what? I'm going to turn on the chat for a second just to capture that. Is it going to come up? There it is. Women in Comics is the first attempt to document the careers of the hundreds of women who have created and worked in the field of comic books, strips, comic books, and cartooning. Okay. We'll take that down. Turn off the chat. Now check this out. Check this out. You got all these guys. Rocketeer appearances. New Mutants. Teen Titans, Next Men, Next Man, not Next Men, Next Men is different, right? Supergirl, Web of Spider-Man, $1.50, Thunder Agents, but check out the prices for X-Men. X-Men number 95, good to find for $40, $29, and very fine to near mint for $40, right? Check out these prices for X-Men. Wow. Would like to get my hands on some of those. Right? They got the Dark uh, Phoenix Saga going on here as well. X-Men number 100. Right? Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Now. Let's read one more story in 1986. Yeah, Cheryl, that was a price in 1986. Uh, let's confirm that. Let's see, this is the, the book. Yeah, 1986. Great investment, right? 
nice investment. Uh, not as good as buying Microsoft stock, but pretty good. Sure, okay, who has a time machine? So let's take a look at this. Um, this is uh, Boris Karloff, right? Tales of Mystery. It came from below in a burst of fury. We're not going to read this story. I, I read this whole thing. It was really good. And this was a really good story as well, right? But I thought I'd read something that could be relevant to us as well based on a lot of theories going around, right? And this book came out 1976, right? So this is Boris Karloff, Tales of Mystery, number 71, October 1976, it came out, okay? And we're gonna go to, this was a great, this was, Boris Karloff fantastic series by the way fantastic series right great short stories uh, intelligent science fiction fantasy uh, human stories very cool very cool okay but we're gonna read this one gathering so I did this okay like I called it alien but it's related to a lot of other things too Elder God, you found it, you rock. <laughs> so we're going to read this story. Boris Karloff, Tales of Mystery, Gathering of the Clan. Okay. It's about five pages or so, five or six pages. Deep underground, a strange meeting begins. Hear me, children, children of Zrag. There is a spy among us. Cult meeting. A spy? He must be exposed quickly. A. And what quicker way to expose him than by revealing? They start taking off their masks. Our true selves. Right. So this is reminiscent of They Live, right? And They Live, the movie, came out in 1980s, I believe. And this is 1976, did we say? Right? And I wonder what They Live uh, is based on the movie. So here's a little intro by this person, right? And he's the main character of what's going on. A rather eerie way to start proceedings, wouldn't you say? Or well, for one man, however, it is not only the beginning, but also perhaps the end. To learn how he came upon this madness, let us look in on a meeting that took place. Some days earlier, in the publisher's office of a ma in the publisher's office of a major metropolitan newspaper, Daily Chronicle. Imagine what a story it'll make, Mr. Crane, when I expose their deepest secrets. What's the big deal, Archer? Crackpot cults are a dime a dozen nowadays. Yes, but this is the most exclusive cult of all. Some of our most respected citizens are members. You could be stepping on a lot of wrong toes, Archer, the publisher says. Or the editor, right? I'll take my chances, Mr. Crane, Archer replies. If you don't like the story I come up with, you can always fire me. And I can sell it. To another newspaper he says and so on the night of the fateful meeting all my leads were right on the button he thinks that cave 
is their secret meeting place. And their uniform makes a great cover for my face. He puts on his robe. But now, as the cultists remove their plastic skins, that's their secret. They're alien beings, every last one of them, he thinks. How did they know a stranger was here? Got to slip out before they, they see him, the aliens in the back, right? Going somewhere, brother? Zragian or is it that you are not from Zrag after all who is he one of them asks a cheap scandal monger named Peter Archer ah yes a reporter from the Daily Chronicle I believe Shall we tell him who we are? Why not? He will never be able to reveal us to anyone. You see, Mr. Archer, we were a small band of criminals banished from the planet Zrag. Earth is the only other world whose food and climate can sustain us. So far, we are still in few in number, so we must operate undercover, posing as respectable citizens. But once our population has grown large enough, we shall make ourselves known. Your brains are like those of insects compared with ours. Come. Of course, with such knowledge you cannot live here leave here alive no wait archer says i won't breathe the word of this i promise i swear please i don't want to die he says Hold. Perhaps we should reconsider, one of them says. If you were suddenly to vanish, it might arouse suspicion. True, and there are other ways to maintain his silence, safer ways. Perhaps you are right, one of them says. Very well. You are free to go, but remember we will be watching you if you dare try to betray us oh uh, believe me you can trust Pete Archer smiles and waves do you think he will really remain silent one of them asks for you that was the tough toughest con I ever had to pull now to get the story in he says or thinks next morning I just got in Archer give me a moment to relax this can't wait mr. C mr. crane it's the hottest story of the century speaking of hot stories is rather warm in here this morning mind if I make myself more comfortable archer er no ah uh, that's much better he says now what is this exciting story you uncovered 
Uh, nothing, sir. It was all a mistake. A mistake, gulp, that I'll never make again. Yes, Pete. Yes, Pete Archer is finally a believer. And you'd better be one, too. For there's no telling whose alien eyes are watching you. I thought this was uh, pretty relevant to uh, some of the thoughts going around at present. The theme of uh, certain stories as well as uh, certain movies, TV shows, and theories. And theories. Do we have more? Do we have more? You know what, gang? Let's end it with that one. Let me turn on the chat. Turn on the browser. Turn on my camera. Okay. I thought that was fun to read. Uh, life, life. Where did I put this one? Let me put this guy back in here. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it like this. Uh, I thought that was those were good reads. I thought they were fun reads. Okay, uh, definitely uh, a good way to start our uh, reading uh, season. Uh, super fun. <laughs> Reminds me a bit of Pepe's The Aliens. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about it. Pepe. Ooh. Could be, could be, right? Uh, so super fun reads, super fun reads. I really liked uh, The Trouble with Girls. I thought that was fantastic. I thought it was fantastic, right? Give me more, give me more. We're going to do more comic book readings this year. We got, uh, uh, I'm reading a fair bit. I wouldn't mind going through some more of these. But they're longer reads, some of the ones that I have here. Uh, what's this one? This one's heavy. This one I like to read, but it's heavy. Um, i rather end it on a lighter note. Uh, Uncharted Days. Uh, Pluton. Oh, where did we go? Hold on, I missed some chat. I like the comics. Comic readings are fun. Comic readings are fun. Comic readings are fun. And informative, right? Pluton Explorers. Back to girls. I have to read re important parts. <laughs> Uncharted Days. Watching this has given me the itch to get back into comics. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that's one of the reasons, by the way. I have comic books framed and on my walls and... I have comic books in my space because if I don't read, I see them all the time. So it gives me the itch to read more and more, right? Uh, to not stop reading. Uh, luckily, I have a lot handy right now to read. Um, when I run out of these, I might go back to the comic book store or I might start going into my boxes. Uh, bring some here I have some in different places uh, bring some here start going through some of them uh, and maybe get back into reading some of the comic books we said we were going to read uh, in comic book reading set number four we still haven't gone through the whole list yet uh, we're we're just reading randoms uh, and we're gonna continue to read randoms until I finish all these going through uh, the rest of the the comics that I bought for 25 cents because uh, I definitely they're, they're in my space I have to go through them and either archive them or put them I'm putting them all in a reading pile at a corner of the house uh, so that's what I would like to do uh, fantastic reads fantastic reads uh, aside from that gang uh, let's call the stream let's call the stream um, most likely we're gonna do one stream next week this is the last week of school with my students I have some students that are going to be carrying on into the summer most likely maybe uh, a lot of them do want to but very few of them ever do uh, 
but we're definitely I'm definitely going to take a break from teaching uh, even if students want to continue so I'll have more time we're going to do more comic book readings uh, we'll go through more of these little segments and uh, we're going to read trading cards we're going to do cooking streams we're going to do more patio stuff and uh, other things and liqueurs and we'll see what what else we'll get up to definitely look at the world map again uh, so this week after this week's over we'll probably do one next weekend maybe uh, but as of next week we're going to start doing uh, more live streams during the week as well okay now that my time is going to be freed up so if there's any times that you do want us uh, to do live streams on go to our gilded server and just in general just go chicho can you do a live stream on these days on these times and i'll try to accommodate school out schools out for the summer do, 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 do. Uh, and aside from that gang if you want to follow this work i'm on patreon substack subscribe star you can definitely follow the work there we're live streaming on twitch so if you want to participate in these live streams twitch is where you want to be at okay uh, participate in these conversations elder god please no saturdays no saturdays okay no saturdays yeah we won't do next saturday uh, maybe do next sunday we'll probably do if we're going to do next sunday most likely it'll be a patio stream uh, uh, patio garden cigar smoking stream again except later in the day okay elder god okay elder god i'll try to remember for sure later in my time so we'll probably start doing some uh evenings as well now um, um and we'll see we'll see uh, we should talk about it on gilded so i don't forget but I don't think I'll forget. No Saturdays. Good. That's your busy time, Elder God, for sure. Uh, gang, mods, again, thank you very much for being here. Elder God, Cheryl, thank you. It is in large part uh, because of the mods, because of the support, we're getting all these platform uh, platforms as well as a handful of people still on sensor tube that are supporting us and everybody that's supporting us on bitch rumble and odyssey and everywhere else that we're able to do what it is that we are doing uh you can definitely find us on twitter minds vk gap getter and uh substack notes and for some of the podcasts we do upload to soundcloud uh, the audio uh, as podcasts and you should find them on your favorite podcasting platform and i'll try to get on top of it and start uploading more and at some point hopefully this summer we're going to start live streaming on rumble and possibly start uh doing uh, the recorded videos as well elder god more pickups on evening streams on saturdays okay okay yeah people dropping in yeah maybe we do that we do saturday evenings plutonic polaris with the bricks returning on the scene with the bricks returning on the scene uh aside from that gang i hope you have a fantastic sunday and uh, i'll see you guys on gilded i'll be around and uh live stream next week if not sunday then monday okay bye everyone <laughs>